I loved books before I got locked up. I remember asking somebody to send me a book and a person whose name I never knew, whose face I never saw, slid me Dudley Randall's The Black Poets. And I thought that uh, if I could bring my experiences to life in that way, I could do something good for myself, for my friends. And so at that moment, reading that anthology, I became a poet. My name is Reginald Dwayne Betts, and I'm a poet, a lawyer, a citizen, promoting the rights and, and advocating for the dignity and the freedom for people currently incarcerated. When I was 16 years old, I carjacked a man. And the next day I was arrested and been sentenced to nine years in prison. I spent nine years writing every day, reading every day, imagining that words would give me the freedom to understand a way to connect with the people around me. One of the first poems I wrote had a line that said, it doesn't matter what I do when I leave here because nobody who's here who matters will ever see it. I really thought that was the case. And that's why I was so surprised when my friend said, you know, your book is in a library now. And what I hope happens is that my story matters to somebody in a real way, that the words that I've written matter, and that the books and the stories and the writers that I'm exposing people to, that they'll matter. In prison, everybody called me Shahid. I chose a name for myself out of a book of names. And the word Shahid, it means witness. And Shahid reads his own poem is a testament to how we might read our own stories into existence. And those poems are about the way in which me and a lot of people I know, we tried to write ourselves into existence with the lives that we lived. And ultimately it's a testament to that, that desire to invent yourself in a way that you find meaningful. I named my last book Felon because I do think language matters. The reason why I've had scholarships taken away from me the reason why there have always been places that wouldn't allow me to rent apartments in their communities. The reasons why there were friendships that, that never developed was because folks recognized me as a felon. And I think what needs to change is, is the way in which this society, the community, we imagine that we might change, that we might transform. So I'm not trying to run from the crime I committed, but I am trying to say that I hope people can imagine that I am more than that moment. I used to think that I went to law school to become a public defender. Now I recognized after having spent the last few years helping people who I met when we were teenagers, who were still serving time, helping them get free. I realized ultimately I went to law school because it was really hard to live in a world knowing that you've left people behind and knowing that it might be something more you could do. In prison, the movement is so controlled that you can't freely like go to a library. Freedom Reads is the case that we all deserve access to the hope, to the dignity, to the life-affirming thing that books give us. And what I'm doing is building libraries. And on top of that, what we're doing is bringing writers into prison. And we create book circles where we give dozens of people the same book so that they become a community talking about that book. And we have workshops that help people understand that this is what it means to become a writer. And I honestly think by doing that, we give everybody a bit more of a taste of freedom, a bit more of a taste of possibility. I think that fundamentally, my work is about freedom. People in prison, they become obsessed with freedom. And when I was in prison, I wasn't obsessed with the worst aspects of dawn time. I was obsessed with those moments that reminded me that I, I might be free. And I think that sometimes people might not understand that if I write about prison every day for the rest of my life, the thing that I'm really writing about is that desire, that chase, that want, that hope for freedom.